podcast, playing the field, featured on 007. I'm going to address the retirement statements from the Texans' Twitter account. The way Jordan did, I'm back. We're moving on. We're here with Primetime 000 and QB Stud. <laughs> How are we doing today? Hey, I'm great, man. I'm hanging in there. Glad so you're back. That's good to hear. I didn't know what the what the news was, so it sounds like you are back. That's good. That's good news. Yeah, it's it was in a dark place. You know, you're one in fifteen, and you lose to Raider fan, and he runs for four hundred yards and just absolutely <laughs> gapes your asshole. It makes you rethink life itself. So. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to move past that. i got a lot I want to talk about. First and foremost, we have to address the play. The, I don't know what else to call it, a fumble roof ski, a drop ski, uh, oh shit ski. And the yeah. Super Bowl, And I addressed it in social chat, but just in case people didn't see it, Madden Bowl just happened. That's a lot of controversy in real life. The guy that won the whole thing without using an actual quarterback, used a punter, didn't throw a pass in the final game, if I'm not mistaken. Did it all pretty much running. Hashtag Y pass. Um, this game is absolutely broken, and it showed in our very own Super Bowl primetime 0 0 0 15 time SML champ. And he played Sunday Squad, a man that rose in the ranks of the primer, won a Super Bowl. There's one, two now in the SML, and it came down to a, a tip pass. It bounced up, bounced off a guy's foot, and he happened to have another receiver right there ran in. What was your thoughts on that play as it? unfolded and then subsequently the rest of the game did that play a large factor on your mind as you finished out the game you just kind of feel defeated at that point I mean what what happened right so obviously I had a good punt I, I put him in a situation where I thought obviously I had the game in the bag I would like to have gotten the first down to end it but I wanted yeah. to play it smart run the ball I punted him inside the five you know that's where you want him at um so there's a few people asking why I didn't go prevent defense and maybe I should have, it's not easy to go hindsight 2020. Right. But the, right. the thing, the thing I was thinking is he had around 48 seconds, I think when he got the ball roughly around there and what he had been doing. And I, cause I'd gotten DMS from a bunch of people like, mm-hmm. Hey, watch his, watch his running back. He takes that check down to the running back. And I actually seen Haas do something similar where they'll take a check down to a running back and they'll be able to like juke around and swerve around defenders and prevent defense and score like 80 yard touchdowns. So I'm like, crap, I don't need that. What right. I do is go cover three, watch the short crap. And then I'll still, I'll play off coverage, play over the top. And then there'll be a guy there. And then if he gets a completion, maybe that'll just chew out the clock or whatever. So when the ball's in the air, I'm nervous for pass interference because his receiver stopped and stopped the drought basically. Cause he threw the ball late. Um, when the ball tipped up, um, I was I was upset that he got the play, obviously, because it was a tip drill. It wasn't really a cover three beater. It was more of just a, a chuck and prayer. Mm-hmm. So um, then after – actually, when he scored, the first thing that went through my mind was, uh, all right, I got 18 seconds. I'm going to go down and score. Got a few good passes. I just threw a dumb post route. I, I just forced it. You right. know, I was nervous. Made a dumb decision. And then the out route to end the game with three seconds left, I, that was just a dumb decision again. But, uh, yeah, I mean – uh, the just the the tip was unfortunate. It's always unfortunate because I feel like I played better than him most of the game. QB, you had the call, or you and Meats had the call. Did you? What did you think about that? What were your thoughts as a commentator seeing that live? I mean, it's kind of unprecedented in a way. You hate to see two guys that you know at the top of their game that they did all that to get to that point, and then to come down to a play like that. I mean, did it seem unfortunate to you in that moment, or what? Did, what were your thoughts with that call? Uh- yeah, if you, if you go back and play back exactly what I said in the moment, I was like, that is unfortunate. Yeah, uh, It left me mostly speechless, and really, I feel bad for both of those guys. For Prime, obviously, because he outplayed Sunday the entire game pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I even mentioned at one point where you had uh, that fumble that was returned for a touchdown at the end of the first half. It's like, well, Prime just made a play that was user skill-based, put himself in a good position, and then Sunday got a play based off of his player and you know chance, and then scored off of it. So that's really got to hurt. And then he continues to just play really well. And so he walks away from this game with a loss, with a loss, and having felt like he played better and got hosed. But from Sunday's point of view, I mean, he won. He had 19 and 0 season, yeah. and now he's going to have people forever, pretty much, put an asterisk yeah, on that 19 and 0 season, and that yeah. never feels good because you have to bust your ass. To get to 19, no, I don't care how much luck was involved. Right, I agree. So, I guess we'll move on. We've 
beat that dead horse to the point where he's in a glue factory. The next topic of discussion, something I thought was rather interesting. You don't really see a whole lot of guys retire each season here in our league, but there is a shit ton of retirements this time. And I don't know if you guys take a look at it yet, but I'm going to go through the list. The Colts lost, Bashard Perriman, not a huge loss, I don't think, for you. Patriots, no. Brian Winters, right tackle. Patriots, Kyle Fuller, cornerback. Quarterback, Derek Carr, after 12 seasons. Wide receiver from the Eagles, Robbie Anderson. Uh, the Packers, Corey Grant. Cam Newton from the Falcons. Taylor Lewan from the Falcons. The Ravens, right tackle, Jawan James. The Texans, Zach Fulton, Javon Hargrave, DeAndre Hopkins, the Saints, Teron Armstead, the Rams, Mark Lokowski, and Aaron Donald, the Lions with J.C. Treader, the Jets, Eli Harold, outside backer, Le'Veon Bell, running back, the Giants, Joel Batoni, the center, Cowboys, Travis Frederick, the center, the Chargers, Kevin Zeidler, the guard, the Bucks. DJ Fluker, the guard. Broncos, left tackle Jake Matthews. Then basically some no-name guys. Kenny Stills, Graham Gano, Greg Zerline, Greg Eo, however the hell you say his name, and then head coach Mike Zimmer. What are your thoughts on those time? Some significant there. I mean, in my opinion, it was just kind of a large list. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I guess I'll go first, and then uh, QB. So I don't... It is kind of crazy. I don't know how the game decides those retirements. Mm-hmm. I do know I played Aaron Donald, uh, I, I believe it was this season, and it was like still insta-sack every yeah. fucking play. So, so uh, I mean, kind of interesting. I, I don't think it really has a rhyme or reason to how it decides retirements other than player gets a little old, and it, I guess it, that's how it decides it. What do you think? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to imagine that there's some RNG percent chance – scaling with how old they are and how little they have left on their contract. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of names, but part of the reason why that's a lot of names is because we're just so far into the cycle that even guys that were kind of young when we started are now deep into that age. It's going to happen. The same thing would happen the next season. It's just we got deeper into the cycle this year than than you guys have any other cycle. So you're going to see that start to come up more and more as you get deeper in. Yeah, and Aaron Donald finished his final season 20 sacks. I mean, just going through, it looks like his <laughs> SML career. 2019, 45 sacks. 2020, 33 sacks. 2021, 28. 2022, 36. 23, 19. 2024, 21. And then his final season, 20 sacks. Um, obviously, I'm not a fan of the way that the stats play out, which was kind of segue to the next point. Rushing. Rushing. Hashtag wide pass. If you look at the SML rushing leaders, you got three of them over 2,000 yards, and then two guys pretty damn near close, Naeem Hines and Michael Rivers. But Freddie Golden with almost 2,500 yards, 2,446 yards. Tymone Greer, 2,393 yards. Freddie Golden with 34 touchdowns. The NFL record in real life was set in 2006 by LaDainian Tomlinson with two, with 26. Todd Gurley, 2,210 yards, 19 tutties. Naheem the Dream Hines with 1,800 yards and 31 touchdowns. So, yeah. I guess, in my opinion, do you think this is somewhere we need to implement a stat cap? Is it just because this game is such dog shit that why pass and guys just are burning it up? Or, I mean, why, why do we have such a discrepancy between real life and having all these guys with over 2,000 yards? In my opinion, the game is obviously really offensively focused. When I first picked it up to even play the beta, I was like, oh, wow, mm. this is a very offensively focused game. When you throw the ball, people don't react like they should. Uh, they made the passes where you could actually angle the passes a little bit better. That was a big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, obviously, with the abilities, right, you have the the juke, not jukebox, the joystick, all this stuff. Right. One thing I will say, and you brought it up, that Madden tournament or whatever it was, Madden Championship. Yeah, Madden Bowl. That one guy that won, he had used a all running plays, a punter because the handoffs are quicker, and all running plays, which is just freaking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the SML, I will say, uh, since we do eliminate some of those cheese schemes and stuff where people can't do it, you do have to be somewhat competent passing the ball. You see certain guys get exposed, like Meats, where, yeah, he can run, he can win 11, 12 games a year, but at some point when he plays guys who can at least slow it down where he's going to have to make a few passes a game and they can't do it, then they'll lose. That's why you have your Meats, Raider fan, and a few other guys uh, like Collie, another guy who can run the ball but can't win it here because 
Uh, I feel like you do need still need to pass it uh, in a sim league. What do you got, QB? Yeah, I actually covered this in my first uh, article in the new series that I'm trying out. Uh, I think what it really comes down to is running is easier than passing, but that doesn't make it better. No. You referenced the Madden Bowl a couple of times. Yeah. The reason why that was so prolific in that setting is because it's a salary cap setting. So he was able to really cheap out on passing the ball, focus on running the ball, spend a few of his budget there but then really max out that defense. Apparently, I don't even know what the guy's name is or anything about him. I don't remember. But apparently, what's that? I don't remember either. Yeah, it, it, it's like Joke or Joker Joke. or something like that. But yeah. apparently, he's one of the best defensive users in that scene. So he spent all of his cash on, or all of his budget on defense, shut people out, and then spent no money on his offense. And you can run with nothing in this game. All you need is someone that's a little quick, and you need to understand how to hit holes, and you're pretty much going to be able to get away with it. Um, when you come down to running a sim CFM, though, I mean, you've got guys like Raider that he had tons of yardage on the ground. He didn't do anything with it because he's not a competent passer. At the end of the day, it should come down to whether or not you can win with what you're doing, and you're not going to get away with winning with only being able to run the ball. I don't see a huge problem with it unless someone's running stretch plays literally 50% of the time. Because that's not sim. There's problems with that. In my opinion, we should probably have some type of cap on the percentage of a certain run that you have, whether it's inside zone, stretch, dive, whatever it is. Um, but it's just run game in general. I don't think there's much of a problem. I guess my final two points on the topic were, for one, there's only ever been seven 2,000-yard rushers in real-life NFL history. The most recent was Adrian Peterson in 2012. The NFL record holder was Eric Dickerson set in 1984 with 2,100 yards. So it's just – everyone knows that the NFL has moved away from the running game, and it's just not really a huge prevalent part of the game anymore. And I, I go back Thank and forth. Because I've seen videos with uh, – I'll let you finish in a second, Prime with the advanced stick skills that guys do, where it's all about weaving that stick back and forth and really just learning to, uh, to manipulate the game in a way. Because with that stick skills – you're manipulating the AI. Like you, the AI already sucks this year. Like you almost can never tackle a guy from behind. And now that you're doing this little, and all you can call it is a weave, a weave run, you're basically denying the AI its chance of making a play like it should. But go ahead, Brian. Yeah, one thing I wish, and I mentioned this like season one, and I, I had feared this because when everybody first gets the game and they start, they start scoring at will or they start scoring well, because I feel like everybody was better initially at offense this right. mad than they were last mad. Sure. Um, you have a better feeling of the game because you feel like you can score points. And I feel like people's judgment was clouded. And I had actually brought up, because we have done this in the past where we mess with sliders and stuff. Yeah. And, and we didn't do that this year. I do kind of wish we would have adjusted a few sliders in terms of uh, defensive uh, reaction, stuff like that. That might have played a role in kind of tempering big... some of these abilities. The biggest thing in terms of abilities is just turning them off. I play. I downloaded the NFL Legends roster, uh, just some guy had made. You play with Michael Vick on there. That's got 99 speed, 99 agility, 99 acceleration. He does not have uh, escape artist. He, he basically sucks. Um, right. Without that escape artist, they're back to what they were last Madden where they're a lot more controllable player. They're not fast until they're past the line of scrimmage, which I get they try to make them more of a threat behind the line of scrimmage, but they it's just so OP. I'd be all for taking a vote and seeing if someone wants to turn these abilities off for this final season, just see where the cards lay. Will it fix everything? No, but I think it would definitely level the playing field in terms of guys with the joystick and just these bullshit animations. One more thing real quick on this topic. Yeah. I think another reason why you have these astronomical uh, rushing yardage yeah. is you've got guys that – I wasn't able to pass the ball in the second half in almost half of my games. Mm -hmm. Like I have to keep running the ball, running the ball, running the ball because I'm up by 30. When you're at a point at this point in the cycle, team building becomes such a huge point as well as just understanding your game plan. If you look at just the playoff games, every single one of those scores was completely reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, I was putting out predictions of guys scoring like 20 was the winner, 21 was the winner, and I wasn't far off on a single game. When you have two similarly skilled guys come up against one another, this game is somewhat balanced. The problem is is that there's a lot you can do to just make the game get completely carried away, and then the other guy's going to make mistakes, which only compounds things. 
I think that's really where the problem is, which kind of sucks to say because we're in a great league and anyone in this league can beat anyone else on any given Sunday, which is exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. But that being said, I mean, there's a discrepancy that's going to show up. For sure. Um, I guess I want to talk real quick about the free agency class this season. We just advanced. After George Kittle, there's not much. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of guys like in the 80s. There's a fair amount of guys in the 80s. But as QB and I talked about while we're playing some KO, it's going to be a bidding war for those top guys. And then for guys that have some money, there's not a whole lot of guys really to bid on. What do you think about it? Was it just the way it played out with guys were able to retain guys? or I mean, it's just kind of a weak free agency class. What do you guys think for this being like basically the final off season? I mean, how does that kind of change people's mentalities to make that playoff or Super Bowl push? Uh, so uh, for me, you will remember, uh, probably not QB, but he's been in other leagues, so he mm-hmm. could probably say the same thing. When you're – when the SML was first growing, you have guys who don't really necessarily know how to manage their roster. Right. So I think we initially, the first two or three Maddens come season five or so, there would be some guys out oh, yeah. there, like big name dudes. And we've been, I think we were spoiled by that to kind of expect that later on. But when you start getting more quality owners, guys kind of know how to build their teams mm-hmm. or at least retain their decent players. So I think what we can expect, obviously, and I th- everybody will probably agree to this, is everyone's going to blow their load here. It's our last season. Just sign who you can and uh, get as close as you can to max out the cap because it's one final run. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think this class is basically more reasonable. There's actually some talent in there. I looked, but it's all role player guys. So, like, there's a couple of corners that have near elite level man coverage. So, if you're looking for a man cover guy, there's multiple options that you're able to work with. Um, there's a couple of even just burner receivers that are available. You've got guys, they're just role players, and right. they're going to get overpaid, kind of like they're in the NFL. Uh, I was kind of frustrated and irritated by it at first because I had you know a few coins to spend. But uh, like Prime said, I mean, guys have been managing the cap a little bit better. You don't lose track of your stars, and so they're not going to show up in free agency. Also, I think people have had issues actually developing new stars. With guys like Aaron Donald retiring, like, people aren't developing these guys fast enough to replace somebody like that. So when you get deeper into the cycle, there's just naturally going to be less absolute studs and they're going to be on the better teams with the guys that can probably manage the cap a little bit better. So again, that discrepancy starts to really take hold and you're not left with much as far as scraps to go to everyone else. Sure. I guess we'll go with one final topic here. It's the final season expectations for this final season moving forward who do you see either that are in the playoffs now that won't be next season or that weren't in the playoffs then that will make it or teams that were total ship ball and may make a, a half ass recovery yeah so for me I and I always point towards them but you expect I expect Woods to kind of be yeah. back in it um I would say he's he's always there he's improved his record the Miles Browns Garrett team, had 37 sacks last yeah, season Miles Miles Garrett is no joke, you know. His his team's there. Um, the, he can be very scary. Um, I would expect you to kind of have a rebound season from one and fifteen. Um, I think that uh, Dump, you you can compete with Dump. I, I've seen that happen a few times. Over in the NFC, I would say uh, just looking at Dan He, I'd like to see what he can do now after having a season under his belt with the Eagles. He competed with Sunday in the divisional round. I wouldn't be so shocked to see Dan win that division. Um, he seems like a very smart guy and somebody who watches tape, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I wouldn't be shocked to see the Eagles make a noise over there in the NFC. Yeah, uh, on the I would expect as far as someone getting into the playoffs that wasn't there last season, uh, Grams was a huge omission. Yeah. I think he finished eight and eight. Yeah, uh, that was really surprising. I know he lost Ross for a few season or for a few weeks. Excuse me. I think that kind of dejected his confidence in his offense, and he started to change things up too much. And then when Ross came back, he didn't properly go back to what was working before. Um, I would expect him to bounce back, kind of figure that out, and be able to, even if he only grabs that six seed, just because that NFC East is so tough, that uh, I would expect to see him back as well. And that means that one of the two NFC North guys I would expect to be out whether it's Polly or it's Lawyer is going to be interesting because I know that Todd Gurley contract is probably ramping up and it's even more expensive this next season than it was last season. 
Uh, Going to be interesting to see if he's able to pay some of the guys that he's had. Uh, but, you know, he's a great player, so it still wouldn't surprise me to see him come back to the playoffs again. I think that's about all I really wanted to cover, and we're running at that dangerous getting too lengthy mark. We're at 20 minutes, so one final little jab I'm going to make here. I'm going to encourage two guys. One guy that still looks like he's going to be a big spender this offseason, the Reaper himself, Rowan Cup. Uh-oh. You and Tiny Titan led the league in interceptions thrown last year. The Titans led with 46 interceptions Uh-oh. and the Bengals with 42. I want you guys to cut those down in half. Uh, Tiny Titan had a wonderful season last year, was a really good competitor. And then Rowan Cup just seems like, I don't know if it's being in the division he's in, but he's a far better player than what his record he's indicates. Good. Seven and nine is not bad concerning his record or his division. I don't get it. I feel like he can compete with anybody. It's the turnovers. He was seven and nine with 42 interceptions. (laughs) Yeah, that'll do it. So, I mean. You have to also take into account with Rowan that he implemented a new superstar receiver into his offense. So being able to adjust and having a guy that half the time when you throw it up to him, he actually makes the play, mm-hmm. it's really hard to also understand that that other half, a lot of the times, is actually an interception. Um, but, yeah, he's a good enough player. I think he'll adjust and definitely tone down those interceptions at least a little bit. Hopefully he'll be able to focus in on the game a little bit more. I know he was distracted a lot before the season, at least last season. So That's the same thing with, with Tiny Titan. You're 6-10 and 10 and you threw 46 interceptions. You cut that down in half, I mean, there's a pretty good chance that you're a 9 or 10 win team. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But kill you. we won't extend this any further. I am thinking about doing a live stream podcast this Friday. So if anyone's interested in doing some type of Q&A, we can talk football. We can talk cop stuff. Whatever you guys want to do, let me know. We'll do some type of live stream podcast like I did on Twitch for the Super Bowl post game Super Bowl last time. Let me know if that's something you're interested in doing. We appreciate you guys checking us out. Hope you have a great day.